a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. Find your full AccuWeather forecast right across the top of this and all CNC local news pages. West Webster firefighter Joe Hofstetter says at first he thought the popping sounds he heard at the fire scene on Lake Road were shock absorbers exploding on the burning car in front of him. Then he was shot. When the shooting started, when cars burn, they frequently sound like gunshots. Um, different things in the vehicle explode, you know, gas cylinders, shocks, tires. Hofstetter and firefighter Ted Scardino spoke out for the first time Wednesday about what they experienced December 24th when a gunman set fire to his house and car, then lay in wait with a small arsenal and ambushed the first responders. Both men were shot and wounded that Christmas Eve. Firefighters Michael Ciparini and Tomas Kachovka were killed. Hofstetter then made a 911 call and warned dispatchers about what was happening. Meanwhile, Scardino said Ciparini was driving the fire truck and it was he who identified the sounds as gunfire. Ciparini jumped out through the passenger side towards Scardino. Scardino ran to the rear of the truck. He thought the gunman was in the burning house, but when he got behind the truck, he was shot and fell to the ground, then crawled under the truck for cover. After he took off, I was in the open and uh, it was a nightmare, um, you know, wondering what was going to be next. Scardino then played dead until he was rescued. Both men said they and their families have been overwhelmed at the outpouring of community support, indeed national support, that they and their department have received since that day. The U.S. Attorney for Western New York has charged a Brockport man with defrauding numerous people over the past decade through a Ponzi scheme. U.S. Attorney William Hochul's office filed court papers charging 62-year-old Eduardo Galan with fraud. The complaint says Galan ran a financial service business under several different names over the years, including s and Unlimited Services. He told clients he was investing their money in private mortgages, but that never happened. Instead, he used it for personal spending and to make payments due to the earlier investors. If convicted on the fraud charge, Galan faces up to 20 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. The State Assembly has passed a bill extending New York's moratorium on gas well hydro fracking another two years. Speaking for the Democratic Party majority, Speaker Sheldon Silver said the state should not rush the health and safety reviews of hydraulic fracturing. We are profoundly sympathetic to the needs of our struggling upstate economy. Likewise, likewise we are sympathetic to our nation's energy crisis and to the need to liberate ourselves from our dependence on foreign oil. But we are not going to sign off on any process, no matter how profitable, that endangers New Yorkers. Hydrofracking has already been under study some four years in New York. A coalition of landowners who have optioned their property for gas wells want to get on with it. But environmentalists and rural preservationists worry the chemicals pumped into gas wells at high pressure to fracture the subsurface rock might get loose. A Department of Environmental Conservation report is waiting on the state health department to finish its health assessment. The group Unshackle Upstate calls it shameful that lawmakers would push legislation to slow job growth in New York. And the New York State Business Council strongly opposes the assembly vote. They say there are few opportunities today that offer the same potential for jobs upstate as the development of shale gas. The Ontario County Board of Supervisors is expected to consider a resolution Thursday night calling for amendment or a repeal of the NY Safe Gun Control Law. Orleans, Genesee, Livingston, and Wayne counties have already done so. Republicans on the Monroe County Legislature say they'll introduce the measure next week. Last month's board meeting in Canandaigua was packed with NY Safe opponents urging the county to oppose the restrictions on military-style semi-automatic rifles and shotguns and on ammunition magazines holding more than seven rounds. There's been a lot of news coverage about how you might be affected by federal budget sequestration. Well, here's one more way. You do not get to see the Air Force Thunderbirds fly at the ROC Air Show in June. Airport Director Michael Giardino says the cuts imposed on military budgets by the sequestration means the Air Force demonstration flight team won't be flying this spring and summer unless there is a budget agreement in Washington. The Air Show will go on as planned, however, June 1st and 2nd. 
Canandaigua's Kershaw Beach should be open for swimming this year, hopefully by its regularly scheduled opening date, Memorial Day weekend. City officials say the Department of Environmental Conservation has dug out tons of old fill that was used to build up the beach on Canandaigua Lake in the 1920s. Environmental standards being non-existent in those days, that material included junk vehicles and construction debris. Tar balls began washing up on the beach last year, and analysis found it was old crankcase oil from the buried junkers. Crews are now trucking in clean sand to replace the old fill and to restore the beachfront, and they say it'll be done for the first weekend of summer. A Wayne County teenager has died from undiagnosed juvenile diabetes. Mark Deary, a 13-year-old Clyde resident, went home sick from school last week. He didn't feel better over the weekend. On Monday, his father found him unconscious. He was taken first to Geneva General, then transferred to the Golisano Children's Hospital in Rochester, where doctors found his undiagnosed case of diabetes. Despite their efforts, the boy, known as MJ, died at the hospital. The Clyde Savannah School District has counselors available for students and staff, and the Deary family is encouraging parents to have their children get a blood test for diabetes. To the left of the player window, you'll find links for these and other stories at the bottom of the page, links you can use to post news and information directly to CNC and the CNC local news pages like greasenylive.com, where I'm speaking to you right now. Next news is as it happens, updates are as necessary, and I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.